Welcome to a Legendarium special about Piers Plowman, the other great medieval epic poem. William Langland was born sometime during the year 1300, early in the reign of Edward III. Beyond that, very little is known about Langland's life. He is thought to have been born somewhere in the region of the Malvern Hills in Worcester. Scholars believe that he received an education at the Benedictine School in Great Malvern and went on to become a churchman, likely serving in Shropshire. Unable to make a living there since the plague took all his parishioners to heaven, Langland traveled to London. There he sang masses for the souls of the rich and transcribed legal documents for their surviving heirs on earth. Unsurprisingly, Langland had a deep knowledge of Christianity and believed that plain, even impoverished living would be the way to godliness. Despite being a devout Christian, he also became keenly aware of the moral failings of the churchmen of his day. Indeed, he took aim at holy hermits in his writing, who supposedly gave up worldly things to lead lives of abject poverty devoted to prayer, like Christ and his disciples. Instead, such men simply grew weary of work and lived comfortably off alms given by the gullible. To better understand the sufferings of the poor, he sometimes wore ragged clothing and slept in the streets. Whenever Langland could spare some time, he wrote, wrote, and wrote some more. Sometime around the year 1377, as Langland neared the age of 50, no small feat in the late Middle Ages, he finished a rambling epic poem called Piers the Plowman. While the language is simple, the imagery is powerful and some of it relevant to this day. In the poem, Langland describes himself as long will and further characterizes himself as tall, lean, and completely disrespectful. His poem is an episodic romp through plague-stricken England when the king is sick and wicked men use his power as they please. During the first of Long Will's dreams, he imagines a gathering of rats terrified of an overbearing cat who playfully knocks them about. At the suggestion of one of the elder rats, they debate placing a bell on the beast's collar to protect themselves, yet they cannot decide who will bell the cat. Langland then writes, Now what this dream means, you folk must guess for yourselves, for I haven't the courage to tell you. Most likely, the cat is the sickly and aging Edward III, while the rats and mice are the parliaments seeking to take his power, for good reason. Late in life, the senile Edward III fell under the influence of his mistress Alice Perrer, who used her control over the king to enrich herself. A series of parliaments, most famously the Good Parliament of 1376, sought to stop the royal family from squeezing the kingdom even more. However, just as the cat bats away the rats, Edward's younger brother, John of Gaunt, ordered the acts of the good Parliament annulled and arrested their speaker. The rats, much like the notables in Parliament, chose to await the day when the old cat died and a kitten, his grandson Richard II, took his place. However, it would be a mistake to see Piers the Plowman as nothing but a political tract. The devout churchman also wrote of the plight of England's poor. There is much pomp and majesty at the trial of Lady Mead at the king's court, when she rides there on the backs of lawyers to contest her marriage to a lord named False Fickle Tongue. While the king wants to do the right thing, he is led astray by greedy and gluttonous friars. This splendor contrasts sharply with the wretched poverty of life on Piers Plowman's half acre. In the angry poem of Cademon the Cowherd, we hear the voice of the dispossessed, which tells us, The poorest folk are our neighbors if we look about us. The prisoners in the dungeon and the poor in their hovels, overburdened with children and rack rented by landlords. For whatever they save by spinning, they spend on rent or on milk and oatmeal to make gruel 
rule and fill the bellies of their children who clamor for food, and they themselves are often famished with hunger and wretched with the miseries of winter during cold and sleepless nights, many hands are willing to grasp the few pence they earn, and while friars feast on roast venison, they have bread and thin ale with perhaps a scrap of cold meat or stale fish. It should come as no surprise that such voices would soon be raised with terrible anger during the Peasants' Revolt of 1381, a few years later. Piers Plowman is a series of quests as the dream narrator Will goes from authority to authority, asking how he can lead a good and Christian life in a wicked world. Eventually, the dreamer learns of a secular trinity of faith, hope, and charity, which allows men to lead Christian lives in an often unchristian world. This knowledge allows the dreamer to return to the human world, and the poem concludes with the beginning of yet another quest as conscience vows to become a pilgrim and walk in as wide as the world lasteth to seek in peers the plowman. William Langland himself died sometime around 1400. That would be long enough to see the grandson of Edward III, namely Richard II, retired from politics and life by the Lancastrian dynasty. Today, several versions of Langland's epic poem survive, likely because he edited the poem as he revised it throughout his life. The longest version stretched to a staggering 7,200 lines. That wraps things up for this episode episode of the legendarium i hope you enjoyed it if you did press like if you want to see more press subscribe and if you've got anything to say let me know in the comments section thanks again for joining me and i hope that you have a great rest of the day